for those watching, thanks for thanks for joining us. Um, my name is Neil Gernon, and um, today we have Colm Doyle from Slack. I can't do a proper intro now in two seconds. Um, I'll just some of the formalities. So, um, if you've been watching before, um, thank you for for dropping by. This is part of the leader series of Rebuilds Local. If you haven't, um, then a bit of context on. On Rebuild Local. So, um, firstly, um, Rebuild Local is created by the the folks from from Yard. Um, we were born uh, last year when all things were going a little bit crazy with COVID, um, and we we built a hybrid event and community platform for organisers of technical communities and events. We were speaking to a lot of technical meetup organizers around the world and we said why not do it together and why not capture some insights from leaders and so rebuild local was was born um so uh, as part of the leader series we have a bunch of content on our youtube page all details can be found at rebuild-local.yard.live um, and following this we have a bunch of actual localized uh, rebuild local sessions focused on uh, actual cities and um, so you'll see them also on the on the website and um, so that's it from for me my name's um neil gernon i'm one of the co-founders and ceo of yard the creators of rebuild local and today back to to colin we've come down from from slack colin cheers for cheers for dropping by and um, do you want to give the uh the viewers a, an overview on, on yourself maybe the context background pre-slack and yeah um so thanks for having me obviously um so my name is colin doyle uh i'm a director of developer advocacy uh, at slack um been here about three and a half ish years before that i was an engineering manager at a local irish startup called kitman labs and many many other hats before that um been around I guess the the Irish tech meetup scene, such as it was, I'm old enough to remember uh, pub standards and uh, and the engine yard, the the loft that engine yard had, uh, you know, many 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 moons ago. Um, mm. but yeah, I guess my day to day job is is working with uh, developers and different developer communities around the world, um, mm. especially folks who are interested in you know chatbots and 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 you know. Uh, Slack and digital collaboration tools and all that kind of stuff. Cool, cool, um, great. So yeah, thank you for thank you for joining. I, so I've bullet pointed a, a bunch of questions I find kind of interesting from your previous experience from a technical community perspective and just you being an observer of uh, of one region being um, Dublin. What's also uh, kind of interesting on the Slack perspective also was Slack um, collaboration tool that's been adopted by many local technical communities as like the uh, the go to for whether it's a large kind of a technical uh, well one specific meetup or, or, or niche community or just the overarching like a regional kind of communication tool and um, so I think yeah some interesting chats to be had so first of all um, on the on the community side uh, so with like the early days of of development with with Dublin as you mentioned pub standards and one of the companies here in Ireland that was enabling uh, and facilitating that connectivity between people um how did you see that like develop over time and any like clear and observed changes from back in those days uh, before there was a you know I suppose a huge boom on con the establishment of, of, of local like what, what are kind of some of the changes that like stand out yeah it's a good question i mean I, I, when i think back to kind of early <coughs> I guess 2010 kind of 2008 which is you know by no means you know long long ago but i guess in retrospect it is like 10 or 15 years ago um I usually think of, I'm sure there were many, many players. Uh, Eamon Leonard is usually the one that I think of um, because mm -hmm. uh, Eamon obviously uh, helped set up pub standards and uh, uh, which was, you know, in a pub, uh, which was a pub in Dublin down in Christchurch. Um, and that was kind of, uh, that was less about talks and stuff and pub standards was more just about like, let's all just go have a pint together and have interesting conversations. Um, 
I guess the I guess the notable thing of how how events have uh, have progressed since then is, is a lot less emphasis on booze, um, but uh, which is probably yeah. for the best. But um, certainly back back then, at least my experience, I can only speak to my experience. It was it was less about like specific. Uh, you know, user groups of like, we're going to be the Linux user group, we're going to be the PHP user group. And it was just, it was so early in, or well, early enough in the Irish tech scene that it was just kind of, um, it was just kind of, let's just chat about tech, you know what I mean? Because you either worked for a local startup um, or, you know, some kind of small tech shop or you worked for one of the big usual suspects like Facebook or Google or whatever. Um, so that was how it worked. And then certainly when the intercom crew, you know, came about, uh, I think Intercom, uh, another kind of milestone for me is when the Intercom crew got their offices. Um, I think it was the one in Stevens Green when they really started hosting a lot of local events. Um, mm -hmm. and they had both their own ones, which were like, you know, a mix of like recruitment events and just like interesting, you know, talking mm -hmm. about interesting technology. But they were also quite keen to host uh, yes. to host events. And it was, it was always easy to get. If you needed a spot, the Intercom crew were always were always good for it. Um, mm -hmm. but it's interesting. And I mean, look, like obviously over the last year and a half, it's all gone to, to the likes of zoom and, and, and YouTube and Google meets mm -hmm. and all this kind of stuff. Um, but it, 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 it certainly matured as a scene. I would say, I remember in, uh, 2016, maybe, mm -hmm. um, when Dogpatch Labs was getting quite, uh, when they had their offices in CHQ, I remember I, uh, one thing that drove me bananas. So I had my first kid um, when I was, uh, when in 2013. And mm -hmm. one thing that drove me mad was, is all the meetups were at night. Um, and uh, I wanted to be at home with my family uh, at night. Uh, and it was frustrating because it was kind of this thing of like, meetups are essentially, if you're, if you're in the software industry, well, I mean, you know, any industry, I guess. But if you're in the software industry, meetups are essentially you're kind of continuing professional development, or they're a form of it. Uh, and it yeah. always drove me mad because I was like, I really hope my, you know my accountant isn't learning about the you know, the updates to the tax code over a slice of pizza and a couple of beers. Um, you know, I hope there's like the thing they do during the during the day. So the Dog Patch Labs crew, I I remember working with a couple of them there, and um, we did this thing called the Lunch and Le Learn series, which yeah, I remember it which yeah. slotted into like an overall thing they were getting going of um, like a, uh, they were making like a whole series of events on a Friday. So, uh, you know, I chatted to them and they were like, sure, well, we'll give you a slot at lunchtime um, and we'll give you all the facilities and we'll give you all the, the microphones and all that kind of crack. You mm -hmm. just bring the agenda, bring the people, bring the, bring the speakers. Um, that mm -hmm. was interesting. I think we ran like a dozen of those or, or so because they were once a month. So we ran them for about a year um, mm -hmm. and they were great because it was like you would just come down over lunch you know, you, CHQ was obviously full of places you could grab a bite to eat, and you would bring it into Dog Patch. Mm -hmm. I usually, I usually got someone to sponsor some some, some food or whatever. Yeah. Um, but it was handy because it was during the day. I guess thinking thinking about it, it also de-emphasized booze in the event because no one was going to start getting letting getting tipsy at, at you know noon uh, on a on a Friday. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, they were interesting because they were again the lunch and learn things were less about a specific technology and more just kind of back to like what I said, what the early, what the early days certainly felt like to me, which is just, let's just have a chat about whatever the interesting topic of the day is. Um, yeah. Just like just this, the, the social, and that's kind of like accidentally where some of the interesting stuff happens. Right. It, it's like, that, it, it reminds me back of um, similar, like my early days in London back 2012 when I entered London's uh, tech startup community. And the reference there for me of community full stop was the thing called Silicon Drink About yeah. that was born in, in London by the Three Beards. And I like eventually come back to Ireland. Uh, like I organized that in, in, in Ireland as a way to um, basically for me to get to know people. Um, but like, yeah, similar, you mentioned name and then of course now with, with, with Boundless and, and Dog Patch, kind of like a, a key central hub in Ireland to do well everything now to do like a, a huge amount of stuff um yeah yeah it's kind of been interesting yeah i suppose like everything has gone now like super niche it's all like it's all categorized and um 
yeah, it's something that we're exploring and we've talked about as well. Just the uh, what people are starved of right now. Their 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 technical community from like last year, or they just want an excuse to be social and, and connect. Of course, you've like you've a, a variety of people that have kind of uh, maybe different concerns or different. Uh, some are more relaxed on others with, with going back um, to that. But for, my next question is like from there, how from a developer advocacy side? So like, how are those those changes and those observations up to like maybe pre COVID or even like you know where we are now? How do you think about that from the developer advocacy side? Um, and is there like those different structural changes whether it's like oh everyone used to be social then everything went niche and then it seems like everything has had a restart now um like you know what that means for like individual developers or like that de devrel that slash dev 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 advocates advocacy and um, like how do you how do you think about that with that hat on um so certainly the last 18 months or whatever has has changed the nature of advocacy um it, just in terms of how you meet the communities that you work with um whether they're kind of like communities that you've created and you're kind of nurturing um so like slack has its own slack community and um, we have, like, course, have yeah, full-time yeah. staff that like do the kind of community stuff and um their you know their kind of focus is like like when i work with the slack community i'm more bringing content than i am you know actively making sure well do we have a chapter leader in this city and do we have a chapter leader in this city mm -hmm. um i think there's this thing of like you know it's democratized access to a certain extent um a while back i like i did a i did a, an event in, you know which was in um azerbaijan um which was great and uh you know i don't know i think however many people have watched the video as well as where where they're live as well but uh like azerbaijan is just not a country that any major u.s multinational has an office in um or even you know relatively nearby um so the likelihood of them having a speaker in person from slack or facebook or google or whoever i guess was relatively mm -hmm. low um so for those kind of communities that are not in the kind of traditional hubs it's definitely helped and i mean Dublin's a funny one because Dublin has such a huge uh, Dublin has two tech scenes. Dublin has um a startup scene which I've been part mm -hmm. of and it has the multinational scene which I've you know I'm currently in and uh, you know yeah. have been in. Uh, yeah. By and large not as a rule but by and large like the multinational scene has the ratio of technical staff to non-technical staff you know is it's far away by the the number of non-technical staff which is not to say that amazon facebook google slack whoever doesn't have large you know developer or, you know technical communities uh, or technical you know hubs of technical staff here but like by and large there's far more technical people in the in the startup scene so um which is all that which is all to say like dublin for me you know professionally just you know putting my you know green jersey to one side or whatever dublin's not a focus city for me or or or, mm -hmm. or i would wager most most of the large multinationals yeah um yeah so it's a, it's it's funny here because we have these all, all hubs here but we would never i i i don't know that it would ever occur to me to run a, a you know a very slack focused meetup here in dublin um because it's just not the numbers versus like berlin or, or london or whatever um yeah. So, like I said, it has made it easier. But but now, like these days, when it's all virtual, the the lift of putting an event in Dublin mm -hmm. is uh, is much lower. So uh, you know, I can run one. And like we, I tend to talk to people now about the language of the event and the time zone of the event versus the mm -hmm. location of the event. It's like yeah, 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 yeah. English, and it'll be in Central European time, and it doesn't. Yeah. You know, everything else is irrelevant. Are you in Paris? Are you in Germany? It doesn't really matter. If you speak English, and that's a convenient time zone. You can. Mm -hmm. go um but it's also it, not just live meetups now like we're putting a big focus into youtube and shorter form content um i know you had martin yeah. github on uh one of your previous talks and like martin's team yeah martin's team are doing some wild stuff like he has a guy called b dougie on his team who is just super active on youtube and twitch streaming's a big mm -hmm. one as well 
um, yeah, yeah, a lot yeah. of developer advocates doing Twitch streaming. And the one that kind of really, I mean, was a relatively recent development was um, uh, Twitter's um, Clubhouse type thing. I can't remember. It was Twitter Spaces. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, I don't know why DevRel has really gotten onto that. And I, I don't know if that's like an echo chamber in Dev, Dev, DevRel just talking to DevRel about DevRel. Um, which happens a lot in in, in my my line of work. Just presuming presuming people are listening. Presuming, presuming, just about presuming people are listening. But I like I remember the 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 it was the first week Twitter Spaces launched, and um, a guy called uh, Colby Falcock, um, I think is his name. Um, he was running a Twitter Space, which was about like how to get into DevRel, or like it, it wasn't necessarily it was it was about like what is DevRel or something. And DevRel developer relations as an industry does a lot of navel gazing and talking about what what we are and what we do um rather than talking you know rather than doing our jobs and talking to developer communities um but i remember the twitter spaces and it was like tw twitter space is funny because like uh, every time i talk to someone about it it's like what they love about twitter spaces is it really levels the playing field in terms of the panelists and stuff and the participants because yeah um because uh you can only use it on your phone and that's it. So there's no fancy mm -hmm. lighting. There's no fancy camera. There's no nothing. It's just like talking into your phone. Mm -hmm. you um, which is all to say like there's lots of different mediums coming about. But that's the that's the last eighteen months. The the the, the before that okay. is um, I think the certainly as a developer relations professional, the the kind of the nicheness of the communities helps in terms of me doing my mm -hmm. job because it's like. I, I know that if I talk to this, like like I said, chatbots are kind of a thing. I, like there is a London chatbots community, you know what I mean? Which is like I know they're the mm -hmm. right audience, and I don't have to like think too hard about the the event itself, if you know what I mean. Uh, yeah. Where if you look at something, Web Summit's a bad example because Web Summit's like so big, but it's like Web Summit's like the likelihood of a participant being someone who who's going to be either want to be part of your community or already part of your community is much lower than if you go to something like a chatbots meetup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just, I was, something that came up there was just like whether it's, I think it's timely, it was kind of happening at, kind of regardless, like existing or new platforms were evolving into like the audio and video space. Yeah. And it's like, it's kind of just, as you mentioned, you kind of triggered a thought there with like Twitter spaces. It's like pretty timely, right? That, and not in some respect, not, res not surprising that from last year, right? Um, the technical enablers of communities or the technical communities or the the at a maybe at a little level even like it's just a, a small meetup or trying to find the platform their 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 new home are you seeing anything there apart from you mentioned twitch and you like we're seeing that as well people kind of rethinking what it is online which is certainly for us we, it, it's just not the same it's not you're not running an event it, it's it's content uh, yeah. and then there's like it, it, there's different structures and there's different approaches and um you know we're adding why a lot to um whether you're running hybrid whether you're running uh offline online live streams it's like you know the optimizing for content versus engagements and are you seeing anything anything there or and, and from slack side any 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 approaches or even observations from from local communities you see on like on the platform and tooling side um I think, I think at the moment, most communities, I think it's going to be tougher over the next 12 months or something, mm -hmm. depending, you know, depending on how COVID progresses and, and all this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but as, you know, w once meetup, physical in-person meetups start happening, you know, yeah. as a kind of a standard thing now, there's a couple of communities doing it now, but it's still mm -hmm. very, it's still very softly, softly. Um I think it. I think it'll be harder because people's like look pre-COVID, organizing a meetup was as simple. Well, okay, you know, some meetups are, are more advanced. Careful, than others. Eh? Yeah, yeah. Some, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Some meetups are more advanced than others, but like <coughs> at a at a minimum, yeah. you needed a space. Yeah. If you were feeling fancy, you you had a few quid for for a pizza and a couple of drinks. <clears throat> And you needed some people to talk about interesting topics. And that's not even mm -hmm. like the, the kind of unconference format where it's just like, we'll all just get in a room and figure it out. Um, and that was that was all you needed, right? And you would post it on, 
you would post it on meetup.com or, 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 you know, just Twitter or whatever. Um, but I think people's expectations for what an event, like I don't think a 100% offline event is going to happen again. Yeah, Def definitely not a professional event like a like a web summit or a or a mm -hmm. Salesforce does Dreamforce. We do Frontiers. Uh, you know, Microsoft does Build. All these kinds of things. Facebook does F8. I, I think they're at a minimum they're all hybrid now. But it'll, that'll, I think, put pressure on smaller meetups and smaller communities because everyone will have an expectation that they can dial in or watch it on YouTube or whatever. Now, having said mm -hmm. that, the tooling available now versus the tooling available 10 years to do that yeah, is, yeah. is much, much better. You know what I mean? Um, like, So we, we, uh, we, uh, I agree with that. Like, we, we had a whole lot. Like, we're in this space. So we have a lot of conversations and we observe and, you know, I mean, honestly, like my, like our mindset in the past six months has been how fast can we learn? Um, yeah. And can we learn at the pace of like on which people are changing their opinions re uh, as a as a result of the market and people unsure and, and oh, we'll just use this or we're going to go back to normal or it's not. It's going to look like something different. And um, yeah, so like for, for me, if you're doing offline, it's like there's, unless it is beers, um, yeah. there it is, it's either content or, or engagement and it should i think we're looking at as hybrid by default yeah no no i think that's i think that's going to be what it's going to be and don't get me wrong mm -hmm. like when i think it is safe to do so i'm going to roar back to in-person events you will not i'm dying for it. i am i, I understand I will be on a first day basis with all the dublin airport staff um strolling through <laughs> i will hopefully get all my various hotel and airline statuses back you know which is you know you know tiny violin for me but um uh, like I, I am looking forward to, it. and from a, like, and that's just that's a, both myself personally, and and my professional hat, um, because yeah. being a speaker at virtual events, it like don't don't feel bad for me. It's my job, you know what I mean. But it's tough. It's a very different experience, um, even versus like doing a YouTube thing or something like that. But like this yeah. is different, right? Because I have you on a screen here, and we're having a conversation. But when it is like yeah. when it is like presenting content or demoing, you know, a feature or whatever, there's no reaction. There's no you're just like talking in an empty room and it's it's tough. You know what I mean? And like, I guess I'm quite extroverted. Um, like, I, mm. I, you know, I, I occasionally will will like to disappear from a crowd and recharge my batteries. But for the most part, I, I'm, I'm good with large groups of people. They don't you know, they won't bother me. And I, I run off the energy in a crowd. Um so I think in person, I think in person events will come back, and I know people are looking forward to them. I know like marketing folks, not just the Slack, but in general, you know, booths, which were like a big part of like the business case for a conference, were just like very tough over the last eighteen months. Um, yeah, and there are places. So, so even, sorry, continue. Sorry, excuse me. No, I was just going to say that like booths and booths are a funny thing because um, I, I, I ranted into a blog post um a couple of months back about about booths and the value of them um and it, i guess it's just i'm <laughs> i've been burned by just how how uh different an experience they are virtually but um it, it's funny uh, like I, I i would much rather take if i had i don't know ten thousand dollars for a booth which would probably actually be quite a cheap booth but um you know, if I had $10,000 for a booth, I think I would much rather take that $10,000 if I was in Berlin at We Are Developers, which is a big, you know, a big event that used to run in Berlin every mm -hmm. year. Um, I would much rather take that $10,000 and give it to like Pi Ladies Berlin and, you know, sponsor their meetup for that week. Like 10, 10 grand is going to be a pretty big meetup. <laughs> but uh, I think there is, uh, I think, I think, yeah. I think hybrid, like I said, I think offline only events are going to be, um, are going to be tough in terms of engaging the community. I think what will happen is, is you will get the same kind of, you know, however, whatever number of people, um, and it'll be very clicky and it'll be very hard to break into that. I think hybrid is, like you say, the default now. Um, I think online only, uh, I would be, I'd be surprised at pure online only events. I think they'll also be very niche. I think the expectation will be is you have a physical place that people can go to if they choose, but if they can't because of either health reasons or because they can't afford to go to the conference, you know, they can't afford to fly to 
to California for for WWDC, which is Apple's annual developer conference, and um, then you know ha- offering them a virtual thing like um, AWS reInvent. I haven't actually looked at it lately because of you know if, if they've made any changes because of COVID. But certainly this year's event, the plan was they were going to run it. Uh, in person in Vegas, tickets were going to be like a lot of money. You know, AWS reInvent is never cheap to go to. But if you wanted to just watch the, the li- they were live streaming all the content for free. So if you wanted to do that, and it's this thing of like the, the hallway track in a conference, which is like where you go. By and large, when I go to a conference, is like um, as an attendee, or, or like if I'm speaking at it and, and I'm also attending, I'll go and I'll attend the event. Uh, sorry, I'll go, I'll give my talk. Um, I will rarely go to other talks unless there's like something really interesting. It's like, I definitely want to go see that by and large, I'm kicking around the conference and I'm like, I'm going to meet up with Neil. He's, he's attending this conference. I'm going to meet up with Vicky. She's attending this conference. I need to touch base mm-hmm. with, you know, um, this person and this person and this person. And it'll mostly be a series of coffees and the various different things. And you just can't do that virtually. It's just not the same experience. Even, even, but even with Slack, that. even with like, you know, a lot of conferences have Slack workspaces and there's like channels and stuff. I don't think it's quite the same. Even even with that, you buy a 700 uh, euro ticket to an event and um, you totally miss half the talks. Yeah. Um, or even like, and you're scrambling to 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 get to one talk that you like jotted down because you're meeting other people. And that kind of frames for us like one of the references, even if you take it away from the conference and bring it down to like a small meetup, maybe it's a group of people, a bunch of developers learning data science, yeah. like, or a bunch of grads and, and it's like, you know, or or just a talk. It's like, I think there's, a, there's, there's an interesting ratio divide there between, and priority divide between a hybrid event whereby, all right, we're generating content here. It's going live. There's 200 people watching, or the views go up after time in the following weeks, up to 400, whatever. But offline, maybe there's an opportunity to optimize what that is, which is offline. It's engagement. It's also content, but it's engagement. So maybe the ratio there is in like 50 people, but the experience is like much higher. Yeah. So like, um, and for you know, I, I think that's one of the things that we've been exploring is like, will companies do that? Will they really kind of optimize for that entire thing? Of like, all right. Even restructure, rechop, repurpose that content that's that's streaming. Um, once it's it's streamed, then put, push it out to a to a channel or multiple channels, and and what, have two hundred people viewing. But the offline experience, then you can be a lot more specific about the audience and what you have them do, and the brand and the feel and the venue and um, kind of something we geek out on uh, a, a little bit also. Um, I was going to ask um, before we did that interesting rabbit hole um what do you see if you now put the we kind of like i mentioned the dev dev advocacy if you put your your, your slack uh hat on slack is powering a lot like like for example irish irish tech community i think you're one of the the, the starters or, or one of the founders um have set that up the, there's a little there's many of them um throughout the throughout the world are you seeing i'm not sure if you have the opportunity to look um but what are you seeing there on people that are, are using slack um to support their local niche or broadly like irish tech community on slack yeah. um what are you seeing there Lee? um uh, yeah i mean when i think of communities on slack I, I ITC Irish Tech Community is, is the one one I think of. Uh you're right. I founded it, um, which is a very lofty description of um when I joined Kitman Labs, they were using mm-hmm. Slack and this was back in 2015, I want to say. Um and I had never used Slack before. Um it was still quite early. It was out of it was out of beta and stuff by then. Um but I had come from Facebook and Facebook had all its Facebook builds all of their own tooling and they actually built so much collaboration tooling that they then, uh, you know, uh, made it a product. So it's a product now you can buy, but I had never used Slack. And I was like, God, this is cool. This is great. Um, you know, I, you know, I should use this to chat to people outside of uh, Kitman, um, which eventually became this whole product uh, called Slack Connect. But um, uh, so I just created a workspace and, um, and I was just like, I invited a guy called Donovan Hutchison, who was a designer at Kitman as well. 
and uh, between me and Donovan, we just kind of blasted out, uh, you know, emails to, you know, or invites to everyone we kind of knew in, in the scene. Um, others came after me um, and kind of made it more of a community and less like just, I, I guess a community is just a, a group of people in a, in a, in a room for one, or, you know, with common interests. Um, but others, others came after me and did much better work uh, in, in terms of uh, the logistics of it being a community. Um, I, I don't even think we had a code of conduct when I first started because it was just like, mm-hmm. it was just like, we're all just people chatting in channels. Um, but the internet's just the worst. Um, and people are, give people a text box and they'll, they'll, they'll abuse it. But, um, which is not a phenomenon unique to, to Slack workspaces by any way, shape or form. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, others, I'd, I'd be remiss if I didn't call it Specious, who's, who's a member of ITC who was there from the earliest days. And they put in a ridiculous amount of work in terms of making it a, making it a community and making it a welcoming place for everyone. Um, mm-hmm. Far more than I could ever do. But, um, uh yeah i think communities in large um in, in slack it, it, slack's a tough one because it's not a community tool it's like it's a tool. yeah that's what that's what i was going to yeah it's, it's, Acc- it's, accidentally they just kind of uh are suddenly enabling a lot of uh community and it makes communities. sense i mean it, it probably i would guess um if there is research i haven't seen it um i would guess it's for the same reasons that i think the irish tech community really took off as in the Slack workspace, because I was logged in in Kitman anyway, so it was just another, it was just another, uh, you know, workspace in in the sidebar, and um, which meant I was kind of always on, you know what I mean? So the the audience was always there. So everyone who was using Slack for their day job also had, you know, was logged into well, not all of them, but they were logged into ITC, and you kind of just nip into it, you know what I mean? The same way you would go to a kitchen and and when you were having a coffee or going for a cigarette break or whatever, you would just have a conversation, um. But Slack is fundamentally like a is a tool for workplaces, um, and it's just kind of a happy accident that um, it became this big uh, tool tool for communities, and they get a lot of value out of it, and that's and that's great. And we've always said we we build for we build for companies. Um, we're not companies. Um, Stuart, the CEO of Slack, he describes it better. It's like um, uh, it's just a group of people working towards a common purpose. It's just the most common vehicle for those companies. Um, mm-hmm. But like uh, the you know the paid Slack plans are, are out of reach for most communities just because like yep. they're they're very affordable, very reasonably priced for professional organizations who are you know making money. Um, there's nonprofit plans and stuff, but um, but that's it. In terms of like um, hard numbers and stuff around communities, I, I haven't seen anything. It's like I said, it's something we know and are aware of, but we don't optimize for. Um, mm-hmm. But it just it just happens a bunch, and like I'm in. I mean, I'm in a ridiculous number of workspaces. You know, I have my Slack turned off now because I didn't want to think every 10 seconds while we were talking. But um, I would say maybe a third of the workspaces I'm in are, are community, are communities that are like not, I'm not part of them because I work at Slack. I'm part of them because yeah. they're, a, they're a group of people that I have a common, a common uh, you know, common interests with. Um, but it's uh, but it's funny. Like the ITC, the ITC one, I think is is actually probably one of the more mature ones globally, based on the various ones that I've gone into. And in that like there is a there's a proper admin structure. There is like tools for reporting and stuff. There is um, someone probably specious, you know, you know has a there's a bot in there that like you know um, if you mention self harm or something, it'll it'll pipe up and you know give you the number of the Samaritans and stuff. Um, and like I said, I didn't lay any of that groundwork. That was that was all the community mm-hmm. laid out themselves. But um, it is it, it is uh, a common enough one, uh, or sorry, it is an advanced yeah. enough one, I think. Um, so so from um, with Slack powering like ITC and many other local local communities. So my next question is is more on that, and it's talent, right? Like it's, it's the talents developers. Um, the question you can reference like you know changes you've seen over the years or just take this as 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 the, as the questions pre-covid covid or uh, but just like more specifically now where are we now do you feel with like remote plus regional developers slash talent commu- and, 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 and communities and for your side developer advocacy or dev rel does that give an advantage or is it one big headache 
Um, how are you thinking about that, right? So the, like the movement of top uh, talent developers, the kind of rethinking of, of communities, if it's not just Dublin now, you know, people moving into Sligo or or yeah. if you're in New York, you're moving out to out to, the, to, to the suburbs or whatever the case may be. Um, so that change on like the, 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 the talent scene, how are you guys thinking of it? So I guess there's, there's, there's two angles to, to come in from. There is me as a hiring manager at Slack. So I have a team of people who report to me. So I constantly have to think about, you know, um, headcount allocation and that kind of stuff. Will I put a, you know, will I put a person in, in Europe? Will I put them in North America or whatever? And then the other one is, is like me as a Slack employee trying to engage with these communities. Um, mm -hmm. On the hiring one, um, Slack has gone relatively aggressively remote um more so as time has passed you know during the pandemic um before that we were fairly aggressively not remote it was like you worked in one of these um seven countries i think we had hiring entities in and it was like if you want to work outside that then i, I don't know it's like once offs or whatever um but now it is like most of the tech industry in particular is just like well you know what we've been fine for the last 18 months slack's plan you know for whatever the future looks like is probably going to be employees are going to be one of three buckets um and i don't think this is like unique to slack i think this is a fairly common playbook across tech now um is you're either 100 percent in the office and and that is like that's like an outlier and that is like um someone who works reception and welcomes you know welcomes visitors to our buildings they can't really mm -hmm. do their job remotely that's just you know yeah uh, you know the person who uh, restocks our kitchens can't really do their job remotely um mm -hmm. and that's just the nature that's the nature of their role um 100 remote which is like i want to live in sligo um and i can do my job and i will dial into the meetings and the way we're looking at that is mostly um there's two parts to that there is like the legal and tax side of it which is like do we have a hiring entity in that country um, now that the Salesforce deal has closed, the number of, um, in, in that Slack was acquired by Salesforce, uh, the number of hiring entities we have is now anywhere. Salesforce has a legal entity, so that, that number's increased. Um, but the other factor then is time zones. So it's, um, usually you have to be within three hours. There's kind of like anchors. Um, so it's like, you know, this team is primarily based on the West Coast. So if you want to work for this team, you have to be within three plus or minus three hours of, the, of that time zone. And like there's a core working hour. So it's like if you're going to be here between 10 a.m. and 3 p.m. Pacific time, then that's that's mm -hmm. fine. Um, and then the last uh, the, then the last piece is what we think most people will fall into, which is a hybrid world, which is um, you are you are co-located in a city that has a slack office but you will for the most part work from home and you might come into the office one or two days a week and we're telling people to be very intentional about why they come into the office so it's like you're either coming in to do like quiet focus work uh, by yourself or you're coming in for like a uh you're coming in for like a you know a specific event you know what i mean like the whole team is coming into the office for like we're going to spend a day or two planning the next three months um and that's that's where, that's where that is. Um, so, like in terms of uh, the what the hiring is look like, so all employees will fall into one of those three buckets, I would guess. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it's probably been good. I mean, if anything positive comes out of the last eighteen months, it's like a recognition, not just in tech but more generally, that like offices aren't the best for everyone. Um, yeah. I enjoy offices. I don't enjoy getting to offices. But I'm not like I'm not like one of these people who is just like I need my own quiet closed door office to to work. That is one style of person and, and more power to them. It's not for me. I've never actually minded, you know, kind of pot farms uh, of you know hundreds of people all stacked into a room. Facebook famously has one of the largest open open plan offices in the world, um, and that that setup never really bothered me. Um, but uh, but it's certainly it, it's enabled more people who. It's enabled more people, or it's enabled us to hire, should I say, um, mm -hmm. a much wider set of talent, both uh, folks who just wanted to live in the woods, um, folks mm -hmm. who, for socioeconomic reasons or whatever reasons, you know, maybe they wanted to live mm -hmm. with their family or whatever, um, it's enabled us to, to hire there. So I think, it's, I think it's been a net positive 
I think I'd mm-hmm. say I, I would struggle to find the counter argument to enabling remote work has been a positive thing on balance. Um, there's obviously downsides to it, but um, yeah, but you know, especially for uh, people. Who are like fairly extroverted it's like not being good and people who have you know yeah. so like i'm lucky you know what i mean i had the space in my home to carve out i have a door i can close and, and that's fine there are people who've been yeah. like working off ironing boards in their kitchen for the last 18 months which is just like i i feel for them you know what i mean mm-hmm. and i'm sure they can't wait to get back into offices um mm-hmm. that's the kind of business side of it is certainly like i said once you navigate the budget and the hiring of uh, and the legal entities and all the tax stuff with your with your hr department I think it. I think it works well. I think there's no reason uh, and then, to be remote. And then over the the, the talent side on the the regional remote, uh, just like the developers moving for for your DevRel hat again, yeah. like it. We're, are we going back to the, the the conversation on tools again? It's just like wherever they are, and we have to think about hybrid, um, or you know, with like you know, what what I mean specifically about that. If, if we we look at Manchester or or London or, or Cambridge or Dublin. Um, the characteristic of, of that location is slightly changing. Maybe it'll go back to, to norm, but many people are, are, are moving out. Are you thinking about that from a DevRel side of, of those developers and community communities? Are, are you rethinking that? Or uh, does that go back to the tools conversation? We'll do online, we'll do hybrid. Uh, you obviously can't kind of run a hybrid, or maybe you can, uh, offline event in, in the middle of the sticks. Um, yeah. You know, but if, if there's a cluster moving out there, if you, you know, Maybe it's too early, but yeah. I mean, look, I was part of running an event on an island in the middle of, the, of in the middle of the Bosphorus in in Istanbul. So, I can, if I can run an event there, I can run an event in the sticks. Um, not not that Istanbul isn't a massive major cosmopolitan city. It was just it was literally an island in the middle of the river, <laughs> and it had no broadband <clears throat> or whatever. Um, uh, I, I think like it, it it does go for the most part go back to the tools thing. I think it's important to remember like i work for my community my community doesn't work for me so if my community mm-hmm. are spread to the the four corners of the earth it's my job to figure out how to work with them rather than tell them that they need to come into london or come into dublin or san francisco uh you know once a month for a meetup like that's that's not that's not their problem is, you know what i mean is there is there is there specific challenges there come if developers are kind of um if you're having to rethink the regions is there obvious challenges that sit back at or is the, is the answer again we just like wherever they are we'll get the tools and we'll, we'll, we'll do it excuse me for being repetitive it's something where no no no, no, think no, no, no. i that. think i think it's less the the, the challenge the, you, you kind of you're doing a lot of the same things but you're doing them differently so like um like i said earlier it's like i would no longer hire someone in london per se i would be thinking mm-hmm. i would be thinking sorry i would be thinking of them less as a london hire and i would be thinking of them more as a um a greenwich mean time english speaker yes. you know assuming, assuming they spoke english you know let's just say you're yeah. kind of standard standard uk yeah. citizen um and, and that's how i think about it but the in terms of how i reach the community it just goes back to those tools it is much more of a focus on um on youtube on twitter i mean twitter's always been a big thing for developer communities but it's much more of that like you mentioned earlier about you know taking going to a meetup and, and taking a piece of content and, and 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 maybe slicing it up or whatever i honestly if i deliver a piece of content only once or if i if mm-hmm. i only get one new set of a piece of content that i'm just bad at my job um yeah i tell i tell i tell people on my team um to go to say the likes of Stack Overflow and look at what people are asking about Slack, right? And what, so the, what are the questions? Because if they're asking on Stack Overflow, then we're not providing the answer, right? If they've had to go to, if, if, they, if they've had to go to SO, then, then we haven't provided an answer somewhere. So we mm-hmm. use that to inform, uh, you know, like maybe a long form workshop, right? And then you take the long form workshop, let's say it's 45 minutes. It's like a breakout session of the conference. Uh, you take that 45 minutes now whether you just present it to youtube or you present it at a physical conference whatever but you get a video recording Mm -hmm. of it then you slice that video recording up into into you know five minute segments and then each of those five minute segments um can become a tweet and you can embed that video in a tweet and then uh, maybe you write a blog post about the the topic or whatever so like every kind of idea should have you know you should Mm -hmm. be able to you should be able to spin like 20 pieces of content out of it um and you put those ideas wherever it makes sense 
Um, mm-hmm. Like I remember when I worked at Facebook and there was a debate about whether or not we should be active on Twitter. Um, and the, the argument, uh, you know, the argument for being active on Twitter was like, look, that's where developers are. They're like developers aren't, in, you know, certainly in North America and Europe, you know, developers aren't using their Facebook accounts to engage with their, you know, with their peers. They're using Twitter. Uh, in Asia, it's a different story. Facebook groups are huge in Asia for developer communities. And it's understanding those regional things as well. And that is that is where the regions come into, come into mind. So if I hire someone in Singapore, um, you know, or like um, not on my team, but someone on Slack Devrel is in Tokyo, um, it, it is their, their regional insights come into like what, what ways to developers in your region expect to be communicated with. And mm-hmm. for folks in North America and for folks in, in Europe, the notion of using your Facebook account to engage with other people, you know, on technical topics, is just kind of, kind of alien. You know what I mean? It's just like, doesn't make sense, but it's huge in Asia. Um, huge. Um, yeah. Whereas like we would think to go to, to Twitter or Twitch or something like that. But that is, like I said, I think most of, even when in-person events become a thing again, I, th- I still think like most of our focus will be on um, digital content that can be reused um, and is accessible to people regardless of, of where they are. Like I said, the important thing becomes like what language is the content in? Um, um, and if it's a live ah. event, then in person, or sorry, the time zone be- becomes a factor. But like, even if we do an in-person event, my expectation for certainly ones that Slack run, um, you know, where we have more control and we can be a bit more demanding um, versus, you know, bullying some poor local meetup organizer um, is mm-hmm. like, we will have AV tech at, at the meetup. Everything will be recorded. Mm-hmm. It'll be recorded to a professional level. So everyone will be mm-hmm. mic'd up correctly. We won't be like, you know, it won't be someone just sitting holding their webcam, you know, holding an iPhone like that. It'll be like a professional, a professional camera, well lit and stuff, because we'll want to take that content and make it available either in real time, you know, live streamed or recorded and chopped up and, and, and done that way. Yeah, that's a perfect segue to actually my my my, my next question. I've only two questions left, and I, I'll just uh, touch on. We actually, I was going to ask a question about developer careers and how when local communities were kind of rethinking that, and um, we kind of touched on it and answered it. So maybe that's um, we can tick that box. Um, but a perfect segue is just what what you just kind of mentioned there. Uh, fitting into my next question. So how are you thinking about, and Slack would be one of these companies that fits into this, about creating communities versus connecting to communities, pros and cons for each. And um, has that changed? Or how are you thinking about that now? Creating versus connecting? Um, well, so like I said sir, earlier, Slack did create, you know, or tap into a, a community. Um, and we have a we have a, a great community team who 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 nurture mm-hmm. and develop that community, um. So I think it, it depends on the size of your organization. I think there's, but I think like at a, at a, an organization the size of, of of Slack, which is you know a couple thousand employees or whatever, um, I think I think there's a benefit to not so much. I, I wouldn't say it's creating a community, but it's creating a space for for exist you know for people who already are interested in slack to kind of to come in so it's not so much like you're just coming into a room i mean like you like slack now um it's more like it's it's more like giving them a space to and you know enabling them so like our community team you know we give them access like we give local communities access to tooling and stuff and we'll give them a budget to to you know to buy swag and 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 food and, and drinks and stuff um so, like, if you call that creating a community, then yes, there is a role for for that. Mm-hmm. My team certainly, like, I would never, never imagine a world where it's like we'll only work with the Slack community. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. And I don't think any, even even companies that have really well established communities, like, um, you know, Google has a huge number of of uh, you know various different meetup communities and stuff like that. But I still think. It goes back to what I was saying earlier about like I work for when I say my community, I don't mean like Slack community Dublin or, you know, uh, there's any Slack community chapter anywhere in the world. I mean, like people who care or are interested about building on Slack or about doing things where building on Slack will make their life easier. So they don't necessarily think I, I care about building on Slack, but they think about I care about building tools that makes my team's life easier. You know what I mean? Or it helps them get work done. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So we like we will always, always uh, invest in um, 
in communities that are like not you know communities we own for want of a better word um like mm-hmm. like Slack and how are you how are you think how are you thinking about that we touched on some conference stuff and some meetup stuff has, has your ch- thoughts on that change on the connecting to communities whether it's a little meetup like java copenhagen or um or a conference or 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 some or a workshop hackathon um like what is I, I, well like what does us helping that community look like yeah has has your thoughts on on that kind of evolved or will you continue to prioritize both you you obviously have slack communities but um then connecting and and supporting or enabling um just communities that are maybe doing something of relevance to slack um you still prioritize support for them but have you re- are, are you rethinking how to how to do that at the moment um i think how we would help them hasn't necessarily changed in the sense that like we can kind of either give them time or money um and you know that you know so we can either present at their event or we can provide some kind of financial assistance whether that is like literally cutting them a check for 500 quid for a meetup mm-hmm. um or or being like look um you know we'll organize your pizzas don't worry they'll be they'll be here at this time um yeah, yeah, yeah. whatever type of food they want um what what I think has changed is um the communities we'll engage with. Um not in the sense of like, oh well suddenly we'll go and talk to, you know, Java, whatever working group, whatever, but more like the Copenhagen example. You know what I mean? Like it's with with more events, whether they be small meetups or big conferences, you know, having a virtual component or like it is normalized now that people would dial into an event, including the speaker. Mm-hmm. Um, it is much yeah. easier for me to say well i'll do that event in azerbaijan you know what i mean like i could never have made the business case before to fly myself to azerbaijan for a 30 minute meetup it's just the numbers wouldn't have added up and it, w- it would have been irresponsible. Uh, on an island or or no well that's it that's turkey that's a different one but uh, um, i'm sorry that was in the uh, but uh well i mean that too but um but anyway i guess sp- communities that are more distributed like Azerbaijan or I mean you know Azerbaijan's not a small country and uh uh yeah. you know Copenhagen Copenhagen's obviously not a small city but like uh, I it, previously if the only reason for me to be have been in a geographical location was was the the meetup and the meetup was 30 minutes long it was hard for me to justify I would always have to like stack my calendar with well I'll meet this customer this customer this customer this customer this one now the number of communities I can support it's like I can support a community anywhere in the world now uh, and all I have to do is figure out whether the numbers make sense in terms of like if I give them 500 quid you know it what's the upside for slack um and previously a big component would have been is like how much time will I need to spend to get to Copenhagen to get to um you know prague to get to wherever um you know uh, durban in south africa or something like that and that kind of isn't in the equation anymore if i can participate in the event virtually then i can help out i'll send them you know I'll send them money i'll send them time um and, and that kind of stuff so it's less of i think it's less about how, how you know what we'll actually do to help the event it's more like there's a much wider range of communities that we can help with communities that we wouldn't have typically served even though they're like mm-hmm. technically I cover uh well technically I run the global team but like from Dublin obviously we serve all of Europe Middle East and Africa um and you know that's a huge geographic area they just couldn't have covered so you would prioritize the usual suspects London Tel Aviv Paris Berlin yeah. um, but mm-hmm. now there's no reason I can't you know help at an event in Munich or help at an event like I said in in the south of France or Barcelona or whatever you know what I mean so it's like I said it's less it's less about the type of support, it's support I provide and just there's a much wider range of communities that I can justify investing in cool cool and um, we've run a little bit over but a byproduct of interesting chat um, and yeah. my final my final question um, so magic wand to solve x what would you prioritize to solve and why to make fitting into the devrel side perhaps or just um on the uh on the on the community side so what would you prioritize to solve and why to make engagement support or collaboration easier with regional or remote developers slash community 
Uh, Very broad, open, open question there. But uh, yeah, what would you prioritize? You can give one or two. Or... Yeah, I'll give you multiple because the complete fantasy ones, I'd love to be able to eliminate time zones, but um, can't, can't do that for a myriad of reasons, no matter how big my magic wand. Um, God. Um, I speak about these far flung communities and stuff. I don't mean to say far flung in a derogatory way, but you know, for far for me, um, and and smaller communities. I I wish I could give every community I work with like an incredibly high quality internet connection. Um, that's come up before, as well as as well as the time zones, but. By the way yeah i mean um, inter internet uh, connection the, the, the is, technical problem yeah, yeah. like it, time zones i can't solve like this the, the sun rises and the sun sets and you can't stop that um but but internet it was interesting it was interesting on on that maybe that's a separate conversation it was interesting technically i had somebody to talk to me about that about solving that as a technical problem and having the event stream at different uh points according to the time zone i was like um okay i'm not sure we can do that right now but like let's look into it yeah we do, um, we do that at slack for 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 certain events is like it'll start at 9 a.m in your time zone but one is getting it live and the rest are getting a recording kind of thing yeah um yeah. no the high quality <laughs> internet connection solves a lot of problems um mm -hmm. like i know we're running short in time so i won't i won't digress too far but in 2000 and okay. 12 maybe mark zuckerberg set up um internet.org and look you can you can have your arguments about mark zuckerberg and facebook and, and the impact they've had in humanity but the central premise of internet.org was like if you enable if you give more people internet access that is there's problems with it but it is fundamentally a good thing and i think like it, you know that's very lofty but like on a really practical level like if you want to go work, I, I, I mean, sure, fine. Sligo has, I'm sure, excellent broadband. But like, I'm sure there's parts of Leitrim and Cavan and other counties in, just in Ireland. Just thinking of Ireland, I'm sure there are parts of the country where um, getting more than a hundred megs is a pipe dream. You know what I mean? There are parts of Dublin where getting more than a hundred megs is a pipe dream. But um, it, it, you know, as as more events move into high quality streaming of video and, and all that kind of stuff, and net, Netflix HD 4K style uh, style events, um, that is going to be the big blocker, um, I think, both for doing your job like working remotely in tech, and um, but also attending events and 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 working events. So like, it's very hard, you know, if you haven't got a like I said, I think purely offline meetups are going to be a rarity in the future. So if you have to do hybrid, that means you have to probably li ideally live stream them or or uh, if you're not live streaming them, you're um, you're uploading a big video file after the fact. But whether you're live streaming or uploading that live mm -hmm. video file, you need a high quality internet connection. And if we're going to engage these communities all across the world, they're all going to need to have these high quality internet connections. Um, and some way to solve that. I don't know. Smarter minds and Google and Facebook and stuff are working on it than I am. But um I think that was I think there was one thing I could fix and that is just a matter of time and money like that that's all that that can, that can be fixed you know just like just like that um well not just like that but with, with money you know what I mean whereas time zones is like a hard science problem and um, broadband mm -hmm. is just like put more money into it you know what I mean figure out a new technology floating balloons you know planes shooting lasers of, of internet I don't know cool yeah um interesting but it's actually your, your your two points were points that came up before i think actually martin mentioned it but um <laughs> super interesting super inter we've run over but super interesting and um we got like we packed a bunch of stuff in there um many rabbit holes as well um colin i want to say thank you so much thanks for taking the time it was it was awesome um to to those watching now live or or later and um, thank you for joining us all information can be found on rebuild-local.yard.live um, there are a bunch of the leader sessions on our youtube page that's it for now uh, thank you so much and i'll leave it there colin again thank you so much for dropping by and, and speak to you soon all right thanks for having me